Okay, I thought I would cover a little bit about some of the solar panel basics. Uh, some people call them the uh, characteristic curve or the power curve. Now here's the standardized uh, definitions for some of the characteristics that you'll find associated with any solar panel, either advertised with the panel or marked on the back. Here's the, the numbers here are actually from a 80 watt solar panel that I have that I've been doing some testing on. And you'll see <clears throat> they have the first definition what's called the short circuit current. And this is if you take the two wires from the solar panel and short them together with an ammeter in the line from the factory they generate a little over 5 amps. Now these are under standard light conditions which are predefined as a uh, thousand watts per meter squared condition so that's not necessarily what you're going to have at your location but that is something that they all have to test against so uh, that's how these numbers are derived and you should be able to repeat this if you had the exact same test conditions the second is the open circuit voltage now this is what a lot of people will first do they'll connect up their voltmeter to their panel and they'll read so many volts and uh, in this particular case it's about a <clears throat> it's a little over 22 volts now that doesn't obviously mean anything if it's just the voltage because it doesn't have a load on it yet but it does tell you that all of the cells are putting out their rated voltage if you're up in that general range there and again the lighting conditions conditions have to be similar to what they're used uh, in the factory a thousand watts per meter squared and then there's another point. I mean, obviously, you're not going to run with a short circuit, and you're not going to run with just open voltage. So there is a point called the maximum power point, which in this panel is 80 watts. That's why it's an 80-watt panel. But that comes at a maximum power current of 4.47 amps. So it's less current than the short circuit, which makes sense. And at a maximum power voltage, that's less than the open circuit voltage, which in this case is 18.1. And if you multiply 4.47 by 18.1, it comes out to 80 watts. So this is the basics of how these numbers are derived. All right, here's a basic graph layout for a solar panel characteristic curve. It will have the current of the panel on the y-axis and the voltage of the panel on the x-axis. When the voltage is zero there will be a maximum short circuit current point where it will start at and then if we have no current meaning it's the open circuit voltage there will be a point over here which we determined was 22.3 volts for the open circuit voltage. On this other axis over here will be a point which will show as the current and the voltage change what the resultant power out from the panel will be. And there's clearly a point called the maximum power point where the voltage and the current are the highest together to provide the maximum power point, which in our case of the example is 80 watts. So here's what it looks like. The solar panel characteristic curve starts at the sh short circuit current level of slightly over 5 amps, should stay steady as the voltage increases but reaches a point where it'll start to tail off, dropping down to where there's no current flow, and you end up at the open circuit voltage, which is a little bit above 22 volts in this case. If we then look at that point on that curve where the voltage is the highest, the current is the highest, it's called the knee of the curve, that's where the maximum power current comes in and the maximum power voltage comes in 
to create the maximum power point, multiplying the current times the voltage to give us, on this axis, the maximum power point. So that's what this looks like alone. If we take the maximum power current of 4.47 amps and the maximum power voltage of 18.1, multiply them together, we come out at 80 watts. So you'll end up with a power curve for this particular solar panel that shows that the power will go up as the voltage goes up as the current goes up and it'll reach a peak and then it will tail off. This is the maximum power point that most charge controllers as well as grid tri tie inverters try to achieve on the panel based on the sun conditions. Now obviously this is the ideal sun conditions and you're not going to get this on every single day. But this is on a standardized conditions this is the kind of power curve that sh would be presented and repeatable. So that's the basics. Okay, we go back to the specifications for this 80 watt panel. We already talked about what the short circuit current looks like, what the open circuit voltage looks like, what the maximum power point looks like. <coughs> so since we know voltages and currents, we can calculate what the equivalent resistance is for this panel. And all it is is, since we know that we have the voltage is current times resistance, we can calculate by just rearranging this equation, resistance equals just the voltage divided by the current. So we take the 18.1 divided by 4.47 and we come out with the equivalent resistance that's in the circuit of little over 4 ohms. This resistance is the equivalent of the resistance through all the cells and through all the wires for this particular panel. Now obviously not all panels have the same resistance. It depends on the power rating of the panel itself. Most panels that are designed to work with a, in a 12, what's called a 12 volt system, which is to charge up a 12 volt battery or to run a grid tie inverter that has a low voltage point of let's say 14 volts, they'll have a targeted maximum power voltage of around 17 or 18 volts. So let's take a look at what the resistor would, resistance would look like as the power changes. So here's a little table that just says if we have solar panels that are targeting about an 18 volt maximum power point, and we know the rating of the panel in watts, we can calculate, using Ohm's law, what the amps at that maximum power point would be. And as we know on my 80 watt panel, it's about 4.4 4 .4 amps. And then once we know the volts and the amps, we can calculate what the equivalent resistance is of that system at that power rating. And as we tell in my 80 watt panel case, we were at around 4 ohms. But you can tell as the power rating goes up with the voltage staying the same, the amperage will then go up and therefore the resistance must go down. So in order to test panels with a resistive load, we need to have resistors that are pretty small in their ohm rating, but very high in their power rating. So if I had the long-term interest in being able to test solar panels using just resistive loads, I need to be able to have a test setup that I can go from about 1 ohm and a little over 200 watts all the way up to about 6 ohms at 200 watts. <clears throat> so the simplest approach, short of having a lot of fixed resistors, was to be able to buy a 2 ohm resistor that was rated at 100 watts and that was variable. And I happened to find one on eBay, brand new. These are $5 a piece. 
<clears throat> they have their main connections are from point to point at 2 ohms of resistance. However, you can slide this slider and it'll pick up a level less than 2 ohms to be able to tap off of. So I could take one resistor and be able to have its resistance vary from anywhere from 0 ohms all the way up to 2 ohms or anywhere in between and the resistor itself has the mechanical ability to dissipate up to 100 watts of power. So that in itself is quite good. However, we know on my 80 watt panel I need to get to about 4 ohms. So I need two of those. And if the number was exactly 2 ohms it would just be connecting two of these in series picking off <clears throat> the endpoints between the two and just tying them with the panel in series. To get to 6 ohms I would daisy chain three of them together. So by buying three I have enough test capability in power resistors to handle up to 6 ohms and 300 watts of coverage and anything in between. Doing all this for about $15 worth of test equipment. So that's what I decided to buy and uh, use that for testing.